I'm going to show you everything you need to play bass guitar with a plectrum. If this is your first time here, then subscribe to the channel for more lessons on all things bass guitar. Okay, first things first is how you hold the plectrum, and there are a number of different ways of doing this, but here's a good one. If you just have your first finger curled around like this, and you're going to clamp the plectrum with your thumb, now place the plectrum in your hand so that the pointy bit is pointing inwards towards the actual bass. So something like this, you've got a straight thumb and a curled finger there. So you don't want too much of the pointy bit pointing outwards because you have way more control if it's like this. If you're further to the back and there's lots of plectrum showing, it's kind of a little bit unsteady. So something around there. But do experiment. There is no real wrong or right with this. I've seen some people hold like this between thumb and first three fingers. But the point is that you want the plectrum to be pointing inwards towards your bass guitar and to not have too much of the plectrum showing. That said, you can use the fat side of the plectrum as well to get a bigger sound, so experiment with that too. Next, you need a system to keep your picking hand nice and steady, and that's where anchoring comes in. Again, a few different ways of doing this, and that kind of depends where you're playing. But the whole premise of anchoring is that you have some part of your picking hand in contact with the bass so that everything's a little steadier. So, for example, if I'm playing the E string, uh, somewhere around here, I might want to just anchor the heel of my hand just there, just on the corner. And let's do that. Let's play some E strings. Notice how the movement is coming very much from the wrist here, and the anchoring is really helping that. But if I'm going to play the G string now, uh, be f feel free to move down. Now I'm going to be anchoring on the E and the A strings, and maybe even a little bit of little finger touching the scratch plate here, just if I'm playing the G. Notice how I moved every time, but I was still in contact at some point with the bass. You get a different sound depending on where your positioning is, and that's the same whether you're slapping or you're playing finger style. So, if you play close to the bridge, I'll play just some E again. Get this kind of tight sound, and if I move closer to the to the fretboard, you get an, another sort of deeper sound. Notice I was anchoring here this time, or round about there actually. Next is the angle of the plectrum. So remember we're holding it between thumb and first finger with the pointy bit, in this case pointing inwards towards the base. And imagine the plectrum to be completely parallel to the floor and you've got very kind of flat plectrum. If you angle the plectrum ever so slightly so that the, the ridge is pointing downwards a little bit, you get a very different sound, especially across these stainless steel strings here. You're getting that sort of scraping kind of sound. Now, a really, really great track to listen to is White Wedding by Billy Idol. There's a really amazing bass sound on that using, you can hear it stainless steel strings and you can hear the angle of the plectrum then. It sounds great in this track. Carol Kay is a great bass player who played in loads of hits on the 60s with a plectrum, uh, usually using flat wound strings and playing with a very flat kind of style. So again, experiment with different angles. So we're holding the plectrum, we've got a nice position, and we're comfortable with the angle. The next thing to, to consider is downstrokes and upstrokes, which is the kind of basic units of playing with a plectrum. So I've got my anchoring going, and this is a downstroke, it's just literally where you, you pick downwards. Now, I don't want the plectrum to go too far, because this is all about efficiency. If I'm playing a... going E, G, A, open string, third fret, fifth fret of E string, and I've just got this chugging down strokes all the time. I don't want my down stroke to go very far because I've got to play the next one, so keep it very, very tight. And for rock especially, down strokes are really, really great. Consistent and driving feel is provided with that. Then we have an upstroke, which is really good for kind of faster playing. So after you do a down, you do an up. And again, keep the 
travel of the plectrum very, very small so that this is a very, very efficient movement. This is brilliant for faster styles of playing. Or fast picked passages. Next is constant motion. Now, lots of bass lines are going to require you to be in a certain groove. So if you have an eighth note driving rock kind of, kind of a feel, then you can stick to downstrokes and you're good to go. But let's say you have something that involves sixteenth notes, might be a little funkier. There I'm using this constant motion thing, so I'm going one, two, three, four. My plectrum is going one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a, which is just your sixteenth notes on every beat. I'm just going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and keeping that moving just to stay in the groove. Now I'm not hitting the string with every single down and up stroke. I'm just hitting the note that I need, but I'm keeping this kind of feel going. And that's how you get these really, really intricate kind of funk, especially funk grooves, but some rock stuff as well, just keeping this constant motion going. So just to review, we've got how you hold the plectrum, we've got anchoring, we've got the positioning between the bridge and the fretboard. There's no wrong or right, depending on where you want to go, just make sure you've got your anchoring going. We've got the angle of the plectrum, which gives you a vastly different tone. And we've got this constant motion depending on what style of bass line you're playing. Click this video link here for a video I did on how different widths and materials of plectrums can affect your tone. It's quite interesting, that one. And remember to subscribe for more value-packed bass lessons. And I'll see you next time.